What's up guys, Shane from Fugadec 3D Printing and today we're going to talk about Megatron. Welcome back guys. So yes, we are talking about Megatron today. This is a complete DIY build slash upgrade that I did in early summer, I guess it was like late spring, it was like May or June uh, 2020 is whenever I did this. So let's talk a little bit about the background of the project, the goals of it, and a little bit of the specifications on how everything came out. Now, when you look at it first, it kind of looks like a bear, but it's not because the bear is 2040 extrusion. This is 2020 extrusion. Now what this printer used to be actually was a Folger Tech 2020 i3 that I actually got from Riley. He put a uh, crowdfunding together and he was able to get a bunch of people like you guys that watch to put money together, $225 and purchase one of these for me from Folger Tech back in I believe it was 2017 when I was on paternity leave to give me something to work on while I was back in the States with a new baby and all the kids. So that was a great thing. Had the project, was able to upgrade things and work on things while I was back home. It was great, it was a lot of fun. Then from there, I went ahead and put on a Titan Arrow on this in order to make it direct drive for flexible filaments. And I printed pretty much flexible filaments exclusively on this machine for quite a long time. Now it just had the standard red 12 volt bed, 12 volt power supply, it was an 8 bit, actually it was just a ramps board slapped on top of an Arduino. So very, very old school printer. But at the time, super affordable because this was before the Ender 3 came out. This was before anything was really that cheap for a basically all 2020 frame. I think it was a little overpriced. I think like 180 probably would have been a better price for it at that time. But still, at the time, it was an honestly great deal to get a fully aluminum and metal 3D printer because all the brackets were metal on it. That was good. For $225. It was actually really good. So that ran for like three years. And then over the past year and a half, I guess I kind of stopped using it. Because I had started, I got the Prusa, I was working on the machines, I then had my Hypercube, I had a lot of things that I was working on, and the X1 is now just my, you know, flexible filament machine, I just only do flexibles on that, that thing, it works great. Uh, but, so I needed to, I needed a project, I needed something to do during quarantine, so I went ahead and challenged Aaron, and I said, hey, it's Sunday night, you want to design a 3D printer? He's like, sure, we could do that, when do you have it done? I was like... I want to have it done by Friday because I want to do a live stream Friday night of me taking apart the 2020 i3 and starting to get ready to build Megatron. That's what we're going to call it. First, we called it the 2020 Bear, but then we kind of just got into this thing of Aaron is the chant for king, and we kind of decided on, you know what, let's do Transformer themed build. You'll see more of these later. But that's what this one was, and it kind of just went from there. So we begged, borrowed, and steal designs from other people because it's a one week challenge. Not a whole lot you can do in a week. We of us are professional designers. A lot of this work was done by him, very little done by me, but we still were able to get it done. So we ended up using was the Bear X and Extruder. Also on the Z here, these are all bone stock bear parts. We only modified one part, which was to add an inductive probe on here instead of a pinda probe because uh, inductive probes are like $2 on AliExpress. Pindas are like 15 or 25, like super pindas, like real expensive now, if you can even get one. But yeah, so that worked out real well for this. It's running an SKR 1.3 with 2209s and independent Z, which is great because then you can have Z tilt. You always want to have that uh, on machines with independent drivers. It's way better than trying to level your Z or try to level your bed because it's auto bed leveling. It has to work less hard if it can auto level the Z and then auto level the bed. Everything just goes down so much better. We did have to swap out the power supply for a 24 volt because we are using a Fisec uh, MK52 clone bed. And on here is a textured Fisec uh, spring steel sheet, which uh, so far has worked great. We've only had it for about two weeks now. Only done, you know, maybe half dozen prints on it. Uh, it's not the only printer I have this on, but for this one, uh, it's been working out really well. Other things we did is we went ahead and redesigned the top bar, or the top mounts for the Z. The Z motor mounts are very, very similar to the Bear. We kind of just remixed those a little bit. Aaron made his own custom feet, his own custom corner brackets. The uh, motor, the Y motor, I can say that one was me, good for me. Uh, the Y rails mounts were all Aaron as well. And he did modify 
a existing control box in order to fit our needs and then a mount for it because we had to pull it back and out because it was in the build space because it wasn't quite right. Uh, so we had to pick it up higher, move it out more and make the SD card accessible in the back which wasn't in the stock model. So we were able to make all those changes. Aaron threw together a great uh, Decepticon inspired logo for Megatron. We didn't want to get copyright striked here so um, or trademark infringed, anything like that. So we went ahead and designed a new logo, Transformery, in order to call this Megatron. Now they probably could get me for the name, but we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll like it. I don't know. Hasbro, hit me up if you like this or don't if you don't because I don't want to be DCMA or something like that. So that's kind of how we got all the design. Again, kind of pulled parts from what looks good that might work and adapt it to work with this frame. And we also had to make sure all these parts would work with 2020 extrusion because all the bare parts are of 2040. So we did have to make some changes to those in order to get them to work in our situation. Another goal was to reuse as much electronics and actually just anything from the printer that I could. So we reused all of the smooth rods, we originally reused all the motors. This project is now sponsored by LDO, I'll get to that later. But we reused the Z couplers, the Z motors, extruder motor, everything was the LCD screen. The only things we had to replace were the bed because I want a magnetic bed. Power supply, it's 24 volt. You could get a 12 volt of the MK52 bed, but it's an extra like 20 bucks. And it's $20 just to get a, a different power supply. So I'd rather spend less on this and just buy a new power supply. But you could do this conversion 12 volt, it's just a little bit more. Uh, then we had to buy the E3DV6, a couple fans, the induction probe, and the SKR 1.3 with five TMC 2209 drivers on there. So I got this built. We went ahead and used Marlin 2.0. I built my own uh, firmware for this. That took, I think, like a few live streams <laughs> to get going. I am much better at firmware nowadays, eight months later but you have to start somewhere. And with this original one that I was working with, uh, with the original just bone stock Marlin build, I was able to build it and get it working eventually. I did borrow a lot of ideas from uh, Chris Warkaki's uh, SKR Bear firmware because how he does things, I do like the way he has Marlin configured. So I borrowed a couple of things from him in order to get Marlin built for this machine as it is very similar. I mean, the build size is, but uh, it's a little higher in the Z. So once I had all that done, I ended up reaching out to LDO. I said, hey, it'd be really cool to have custom integrated Z lead screw motors on this machine. Would you like to sponsor the build and hook me up with some Z motors? Well, he said yes. And then about a month later, I got a box with all the motors, custom length Z, and with an LDO screen. So LDO. Big shout out to them for hooking me up with this. Uh, it, was, it was truly awesome of them to do that. So we're able to do integrated Z. Now I had to do custom height because we reused all the extrusion from the Forger Tech 2020i3. Now those of you who are keen will notice there are uh, 2040 in the front and back of this. I did end up having to change that because the original design, we made the, Z, the, made the Y carriage too low and the extruder head was actually knocking into the Y, the I'm sorry, the Z motor mounts. That was no good. So we had to bring it up 20 millimeters to be able to clear that, which is why the bear has that 2040 upwards and not down. That's why they do that. Um, should have known that, but uh, we figured that out after the fact. But now we actually do have different feet for this that will work with all 2020 extrusion. But now if you do this conversion with the Forge Tech 2020 3 and you use all the 2020 extrusion, we have feet specifically made for that to have them cross over. You're going to see that in the upcoming build Optimus Prime, but I'll make sure to put links down below where you can see all the STLs for all these uh, files and for all the different printers I'm working on here. So after that, the machine ran swimmingly for months. And I mean months. I printed, I don't really have any like extra parts because I printed other printers that I've been working on lately with this machine. Bumblebee was printed mostly with this and the Prusa Mark III S. Uh, they are fantastic machines, just knocking out those parts left and right for me. Basically, these machines made that next project printer. So that was good fun. I do have a couple, I just did a sample print today. And this one's really good to show also that about like anything about ringing or anything travel, retraction, things like that. This printer is, I would say about 95% dialed in. There's something a little more that I could do. I am having still a little bit of flare ups. I believe that's Persia Slicer and some settings I need to tweak in there. But overall, 
This thing prints fantastic. It is truly awesome. I ran into some issues around the along the ways with uh, different throats not really working out too well, but I went ahead and replaced those. Uh, this is a PTFE lined one because I do do a lot of PLA and PTG. So PTFE lined is perfectly fine for me. I don't really ever print anything hotter than 250. So having an all metal hot end, an all metal throat, literally does nothing for me. So PTFE lined is more than good enough for my needs. So again, after I used it for several months, I heard about Clipper and I was like, ooh, that sounds cool. Let me start thinking about it. Well, actually, I shouldn't say it sounded cool. Ryan berated me on every live stream and in the Discord for months that I should put Clipper on one of these machines. So I finally broke down. I had a Raspberry Pi 3. I said, you know what? I will try. So I put the Raspberry Pi 3 on here. Well, I already had one here for Octoprint, but I converted that, installed Clipper on it. I'm using Fluid as my interface. And I was like, wait, you can control multiple machines through this single interface? Hold up. So that kind of changed the whole scale of everything to me because I can literally go to a single website now. I can pull up all my machine. I can add all my machines to that single site, which is actually Raspberry Pi Zero that sits on my desk. And I can just flick from machine to machine to machine and do all my prints and not ever have to touch the screens. Now, since I converted this to Clipper, I have not used the screen once in the past oh, two months, I guess I've had Clipper on this now. Uh, at the time of recording this, you're gonna see this months from now, but uh, at the time of recording, I've had this for about two months and have never used the LCD screen because it is just so easy to use the web interface. Now, there are some people that disagree with Clipper because their machines are somewhere else and they are not, I get that. But for me, I can touch these two printers, I'm that close. I don't need to be far away. And Clipper really does fit my need of combining all my custom builds into a single interface, a single firmware that is easy to upgrade and easy to maintain. Once it's set up, it is very programmy. It did take me quite a while to learn it. I'd say probably about two, three weeks to actually learn it, but I'm pretty good with it now. And I really like it. So if you guys are interested in the Marlin firmware that I originally made for this machine, or if you're interested in Clipper, I will have links for all of that down below. The STLs for this entire build also down below on Prusa printers. So if you do have a ForgeCheck 2020 i3 and you want to have a fun little project of conversion, it's not too expensive to convert. I'd say you're probably looking about $100 to convert everything, maybe $120, $130 at most. But you can still reuse a lot of the actual parts from the original build. You could keep the original bed if you're happy with a glass sheet on it. That's totally okay. You could keep it 12 volt at that point. So you subtract, you know, like $50, $60 right there by just doing that. You can convert it to a cheaper board with integrated drivers. The SKR, what am I running on there? The SK, if no, that is the MKS Robin E3. Nan, uh, E3 Mini or something like that. I don't know. It's a $20 32-bit board with integrated 22.9 drivers. That is less than half the cost of an SKR 1.3 with five TMC 22.9 drivers. You could definitely cheap down on this quite a bit. You don't have to put a $30 Raspberry Pi on here. You can use a $10 Raspberry Pi Zero, which is what I have a few of my other printers running on that are running Clipper. So you can definitely mix and match and do different things that you want to do with this build if you're looking for something fun. You also can do it completely from scratch. I have a Fusion 360 file linked down below where you can download that file, open it in Fusion, take all the measurements from the extrusion, pick some up with Ziltec, I think it will cost you maybe $25 in extrusion, cut it yourself, because it's way cheaper, and you can build your own printer. It's very, very simple, very easy. I highly recommend this as a fun project because I have to say, this thing came out so freaking awesome. I'm very, very happy with it. It is my absolute workhorse now of a machine. I print on it probably daily now. I'll work on a lot of projects right now, but like it's literally almost daily. PLA or PTG is on this machine, throwing it down on this textured sheet, holds everything super well. So I'm extremely happy with this build. So yeah, and again, if hope you guys enjoyed the live streams, me building the machine, fighting with the machine, learning Marlin, learning Clipper, troubleshooting the machine. Like I really like to show all that in the live streams because it's a little more real. Sometimes you look at these YouTubers and you see them building machine and it's just like everything worked and it's all happy. I, I that's cool. 
uh, but I hate editing and I kind of want to show you guys the struggle. I don't want to bluff you into using something you don't like. If you don't like uh, Marlin, use Clipper. If you really don't like the idea of Clipper, use Marlin. It works. They, all, they I mean, they're almost identical. Clipper is still a little bit behind where Marlin is right now, but it's like bleeding edge and there's a lot of change. I actually have a mock-up of the Clipper screen. This is for a touch screen that I'm going to probably put on this machine just for fun. I mean, it's $50. Uh, I can, you know, you guys keep using the affiliate links and you keep backing me for things. So I'm going to throw a touch screen on here so that I can test it out and play with it and show you guys a video or a live stream on me doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a touch screen on this because why not? But again, it's, it's just a lot of fun to be able to mess with this. It's very, very interchangeable. You can use couplers and everything like that uh, on, the, on the machine, on for your Z, no issues at all. You will notice in my model that the two Zs are left and right are different. One side is with an integrated lead screw and one side is with a coupler. So you will need to cut your extrusion accordingly. That is all in the Fusion 3D file and you'll be able to make it fit however you want. If you make it taller, make it taller. All you have to do is just extrude the extrusion a little bit taller, however height you want or shorter and make it work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Again, I hope you enjoyed the live streams. I hope this was informational for you and I hope you liked this project. I had a ton of fun making it and again, it is just a workhorse and I'm happy that you guys all came along with me in the live streams to watch me build it and fight with it and learn so much from this project. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did and throw me a comment down below what you thought. If you want to see me do more of these custom builds, you should consider helping out. You can do that down below by hitting Patreon. A dollar more is all it takes to get access to Patreon. You get a special Patreon role and a Patreon uh, section on the Discord. Other ways you can help out is doing one-time donations down below, or you can use any affiliate links. That actually fuels the channel so much. You guys have no idea how much affiliate usage really does drive the channel. So I thank you all for using those so much. They help me build these machines. You help me come up with these ideas. And that's it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you over on Discord. I'll see you later and happy printing.